Good morning. Again, sorry about the interruption there. Somehow I lost my internet connection. So we'll start over and uh, hopefully we'll get through it this time. I was talking about the beauty of God's creation, how we enjoy that. I know I particularly enjoy God's creation when I walk in the, uh, in the woods or outside any time and just notice the wildlife around me and the plants and the trees and all that's happening there. And uh, we were, I was talking about this idea that we're doing a a worship series in the book of Genesis for about three weeks. We were not going to try and cover the whole book, but just a few of the concepts there. But the first Sunday, which was this last Sunday, we talked about the God creating the earth. And I want to remind you a little bit of that uh, as we begin. It's it, This is the NRSV uh, edition. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos and darkness covered the face of the deep while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the water. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. And God called the dome sky. There was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place. Let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together. He called sea. And God saw that it was good. And the scripture goes on to describe the creation of the plants and the animals and eventually human beings. And it says God breathed life into the the, the human beings that God created, that God created us in God's image. And I love that part of the story. And I think that sometimes people read this and uh, they have only two extremes that they can uh, comprehend in their mind, either that God created everything that ever existed in six days or that this is a story that, that tries to describe how God is part of all creation. And that's where I fall in this story, that I feel like this is a story... There was a, an understanding of that God was involved in all parts of creation, that uh, it doesn't need to be six 24-hour days like we think about, because science has showed us many other evidence that, that it's not, that it's over millions of years. And for, for God, who is really outside time and space, it makes no difference how many millions of years it took to create the world and all that we, all that we experience here. And so I don't think you have to be uh, anti-science in order to be faithful to our scripture. And nor the other way around, if you are a science-minded person, that you have to also reject the scripture. Because I think that the scripture is trying to describe something that's undescribable. It's trying to describe something that we have yet to figure out. We think about the fossil records and the sedimentary rock and all the different things that happened because of volcanoes and tectonic plates moving and all the things that are part of what the science and geologists have figured out over the years, because God has given us the ability to figure these things out, uh, doesn't necessarily refute anything that's in Scripture, because the Scripture is not meant to be a science book. It's not meant to be something that you would take uh, as a literal 24-hour days, but it's meant to be poetry. It's meant to help and help us envision something that's uh, that's bigger than you and I, that's, that's something that's beyond something that they could describe at the time that we can even describe today. I was thinking the last few days on this um, story about the submersible that's lost around the Titanic wreck that um, one of the commentaries comments that somebody made who was an oceanologist was saying that uh, we know less about the bottom of the ocean than we do about the surface of the moon. And you think about that, we've been on the surface of the moon, but we've never set foot on the deepest ports of the ocean, nor will we. Uh, we can maybe explore it with uh, different equipment and that type of thing. But there are, um, there are parts of this world that we'll never fully understand. And we continue to research that. We continue to do the things to help us understand our world better, take care of our world better, to be good stewards of this gift that God has given us. And uh, when I thought about that and how marvelous the creation of the world is, I, I thought of a song that was made popular by Elvis Presley and a few others. Uh, back uh, probably in the 50s but it's uh, written by High Heath, Johnny Lang and Francis Burke but the title of it is is somebody bigger than you and I and it, it acknowledges the fact that God is uh, 
unfathomable in many ways. There's many things about God because God is spirit. God is not a human being. God is not the old man in the sky. God is a spirit, that God's spirit moves through us, that the Holy Spirit of God is what enlivens us and allows us to be human beings. And then the, the gift of God's son, Jesus Christ, came into this world to really show us what it means to be true followers of God, to be dedicated to God's, uh, to God's word and to be sacrificial. And we know that Jesus then came and lived and died and resurrected to show us that there is life after death, that there is this opportunity for an eternal uh, spiritual life with God. And so uh, I'd like to sing for you this song, Somebody Bigger Than You and I. And I hope it stirs your imagination and maybe helps you think of, of ways that God uh, interferes, not interferes, but interacts with the world and how God has changed things over time. And if you believe it's a six-day creation, I'm fine with that. That's really your choice. peaceful, glorious day, that you get a chance to enjoy God's creation all around you, that you realize that God is not something we can put in a box to describe God within human limitations, but that God is limitless and God's love is everlasting and God loves you just the way he made you, the perfect image of himself. And I lift these things up to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior.